All right, guys, greetings, we're back. Uh, diving, I guess, into our trying to understand uh, um, a new concept, right? Or I should say a relatively new concept, or understanding it is what I mean. Humans have always known or seen the light, right? But in the recent past is when humans have really tried to wrap our head around it or get an understanding around it, right? So let us say, what is light? Question mark. What is it? And by the way, I'm just not just talking about the light that we see, the visible light. I'm talking about the whole spectrum, right? The whole electromagnetic spectrum, which goes from gamma rays all the way across to radio waves. These are really the same things, right? It's all the same, right? What the difference is the frequency, right? So how do we describe light? Well, unfortunately, right, we need to have two models to accurately describe light. We have to have one which describes it as a particle. And they also have to have one that describes it as a wave, okay? Now, the best thing that we've come up with, or the way that we term this, right, is, right, something called a photon, all right? So that leads us to what's a photon? Well, the best way that we can call this is a bundle or package of waves, right? Where the bundle would now be our particle and the package, I should say, the waves, well, that's our waves, right? So uh, this is what we call light, right? right? Or I should say how light is moved, right, from one place to another. By the way, let's not forget what a wave is. A wave is nothing more than energy, right? Moving from one place to another. So a photon is this bundle of waves that are moving from one place to another. And something else that's really, really weird about this, right? These photons, these bundles of waves, right? How do we describe the energy of these bundles or photons? Well, to do that, let's come back over here to our electromagnetic spectrum, right? And let's take a look at stuff. And hopefully, we're going to get an idea, right? So let's suppose I had a little photon bundle package of waves that's in the radio wave spectrum. Radio waves, right? Way over here. Does this package bundle have a lot of energy or a little bit of energy? Well, let's, be, let's take things relatively speaking. Well, right now, you and I are being bombarded with radio waves. If we had an old school radio and turned it on, maybe just like you're in your radio in your car, right? You are being bombarded with photons, bundles of radio waves all the time. Guess what? You're not dying because of those. We're relatively safe, right? Now, let's take our reference table and let's kind of move over towards the left. Microwaves. Well, believe it or not, microwaves are still pretty safe, right? Infrared, right? Infrared. Well, what is infrared? Well, it's heat, right? Your body gives off radiation in the form of heat. We can't see it, but it is in fact there. I guess soldiers who have those night vision glasses, right? They get to see the electromagnetic energy given off just by your temperature, okay? It's still not dangerous. However, what is happening as I'm moving from left to, sorry, from right to left? Well, let's take a look. Something's happening here. My frequency, 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7, 10 to the 8, etc., is increasing. Well, if that's true, then my wavelength has to be decreasing because this still has to um, um, agree with my wave equation, which is velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength, right? So as the frequency gets bigger, the wavelength is getting smaller, right? All right, so infrared. Now we're into our visible spectrum, Roy G. Biv, right? All of a sudden, I get into UV. Well, let's think about this for a second. Radio waves are really safe. UV, well, are they safe? Hmm. Well, what happens when you go to the beach? Well, we're coming up upon um, um, summer season, right? And it looks like everyone's going to be going to the beach. What do you put on? Well, lo and behold, we put on sunblock. 
Why is that? Because these bundles, these photons of energy, have more energy, right, than infrared, microwave, and radio. So they can actually do damage. Well, let's keep moving to the, to the right. X-rays, wow. X-rays, those bundles are big enough, or I should have enough energy that they have no problem going right through your skin, hitting the bones, and that's where they get absorbed, right? Now, gamma rays, what about gamma rays? Well, here we have a lot of energy. And unfortunately, this stuff here, right, though does not turn you into a big green guy, right? It turns you into a big dead guy, right? So, well, look what happens. As the photons, right, move along, or I should say as the energy or the particles, well, let's put it this way, as the frequency of the particles increase, right, my energy, right, is going to increase as well. Okay, so there's a relationship about the amount of energy these light photons have. Is that okay? So let's take a look, right? Well, what do we know a photon is? It's a bundle of waves, and a wave is nothing more than energy, right? So what happens? Well, let's do it like this, right? So I'm gonna kind of draw the electromagnetic spectrum. Here is going to be um, radio, right? So here's a radio wave. Let's call this, um, well, I'm looking at it, this is micro. This is what, infrared. This is Roy G Biv, kind of backwards, right? Here is UV, X, right? And this is gamma, right? So what's happening, right? Look, this end here, what do I have? I have, let's say, um, low frequency. And what's my wavelength here? Long wavelength. So what does that say? I have, what about my energy, right? Energy, right? With these conditions, long wavelength, low frequency, I'm going to have low energy. And as I start to move in this direction, what's happening to my frequency? Well, frequency becomes high. Uh, wavelength, sorry, is short. And my energy becomes what? Big. Okay, so here's something that's important about this stuff, right? Energy of my bundles of packages of waves increase with a bigger frequency, shorter wavelength, okay? Just keep that in mind, okay? Another thing, weirdness. Weird, 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 okay? Um, energy, right, comes, it, it's not continuous. It's the best way I can put it, right? We say, right, that energy, all the bundles of energy that are available to us, right, we say they are quantized. This is very important. To give you a definition of it, I find it's difficult, right? But I'm gonna do it as an analogy. So what does the term quantized mean, okay? All right, so here's the analogy that I always use. Ready, watch. Here's a flight of stairs, okay? Here's the first floor. Here's the second floor. And I'm gonna tell you that each, this is silly, silly, but each step, right? Each riser is one foot. Is that okay? So I'm gonna say that if you are going to, right, walk up this flight of stairs to get to the second floor, you will be, how do I put this? The height that you can be above the ground, right? So this is my first floor. The height that you can be above the floor is quantized. So going from the first floor to the second floor, the height at which you can be is quantized, right? So now, what does that mean? 
Okay, ready? So I'm gonna ask a question. All right, look, each riser, right? Each riser is one foot. One foot, one foot, one foot, one foot, one foot. So any particular, you, you, you're quantized. Right? The height that you can be is quantized. So what does that mean? Hey, I'm gonna ask a question. Can you, can you be one foot above uh, first floor? Can you be one foot above the first floor? And the answer is, yes, you can. Where would you be? Well, I'd be on stair number one. Can you be two feet? Sure. I take one more step, I'm at two feet. Can you be three feet? Yes. Four feet? Yes. And I guess this is five feet. So you can only be one foot, two, three, four, five feet above the first floor. Question, can you be 1.5 feet? The answer is no. Why? Well, the answer is no, because the height above the floor is quantized by values of one foot. You cannot be hovering, right, somewhere at one and a half foot above the ground. So what I'm saying is, this is my best definition that I've come up with for quantized, right? Just like you can only be predetermined, right, predetermined heights above the ground, energy that's given to us in nature can only come in specific values as well. Is that okay? So that is what quantized means, okay? So now, I want to show you, right, one of the ways, right? So we're gonna come back to this in a moment, but it is very important that you kind of get this concept that energy is quantized, okay? So let us go back to, right, my little, okay, electromagnetic spectrum again. So here's my electromagnetic spectrum. What did we say? On this side, short frequency, should say low frequency, long wavelength, low energy. As I travel along this way, what happens? Frequency gets bigger, wavelength gets shorter, energy gets bigger. So can, right, so how, can I figure out how much energy is kind of given to us on this? The answer is yes. So we're gonna find out how much energy is in a photon, a bundle of light, by the following equation. Energy of the photon is given to by HF, right? So, ready? HF. By the way, look at what this says. Energy of the photon, right? Let's give, I'm gonna explain what H is, hold on, but just take a look. Energy is directly related to what? Frequency. Is that what I kinda said before? The answer is, yeah, I did, right? Short. Free, a low frequency, low energy. High frequency, high energy, right? But I also mentioned something about what? My wavelength, didn't I? Okay, so how is the wavelength going to be related? H, right? Right? C, well, over lambda. Okay, hold on a second. I said the energy of the photon is indirectly related to wavelength. Does that, does that kind of make sense what I said? The answer is yes, it does. I said that long wavelength, big number here, small number here. However, as I start to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right, as the wavelength gets smaller and smaller and smaller, that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So this guy makes sense. Okay, so let me tell you what these things stand for. Obviously, E photon. That is the energy associated with a photon, energy of a given photon. All right, so I'm gonna do H in a second. So what's F? Obviously, that's the frequency. That's in hertz, right? What is wavelength? Uh, lambda is obviously the wavelength. That's meters. And then I have C, obviously the speed of light. 
Obviously, that's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All right, what's this H business? All right, that's something called Planck's constant, right? Planck's constant. All right, where do I find Planck's constant? Well, where do I find all our other information on the reference table? Uh, and it's on the reference table. So Planck's constant is right here. And it is, in fact, an ugly number, right? We're used to those by now. We have our calculator. We can handle them. So 6.63. So it is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds. Okay? So this is how I can calculate, right, the energy associated with a bundle or package of waves. So let's just pick something out. Let's just pick something out. Right? And I'm going to do it right from the reference table, right? So let's see. Right? Let's say red, red. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here. Let's, since the numbers are here, let's take a look at some red light and violet light. Which bundle, photon, package, whatever you want, has more energy, the red or violet? Hmm. Well, my equation tells me that the energy is going to be related to the frequency. So my prediction is that red has a lower frequency than violet, right? So I'm predicting that a violet photon is gonna have more energy than red. So let's take a look. So let's say red here, let's say violet here, okay? So what's my frequency here for red? 3.84 times 10 to the 14th Hertz. Let's say what's violet here, it's gonna be 7.69 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So let's see, can we figure out what the energy of these guys are? And the answer is, I can, right? Energy of the photon is gonna be equal to Planck's constant times my frequency. By the way, yes, we could use this one if I had the wavelength. This one, I'm giving you the frequency, right? If I gave you one with a wavelength, you would just use this equation right here, right? So what do I have? Energy of the photon is equal to 6.63, right? Am I right? That's correct. Times 10 to the minus 34. That's going to be hertz times what? Uh, 3.8 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So let's see. What do I have here? 6.63, second E, minus 34, time, minus 34, right? Times 3.8, second E. Uh, I'm messing things up here, my calculator. Let me do that again. 6.63 second E minus 34 times 3.8 second E 14th. And I get kind of an ugly number that energy of the photon is going to be about 2.5 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. It is an energy, right? So how about violet light? Remember my prediction, right? My prediction is that this should be bigger. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times what? 7.69 times 10 to the 14th. So what do I have here? 63 second E, right? Minus 34 times 7.69 second E, 14. Hopefully I did this right, right? And my calculator tells me 5.1 times 10 to the 9th. By the way, this is negative 19 joules. So, is my prediction right? Well, my prediction was right. Violet light, it's about double, right? So, bundle of violet photon, right, has about double the energy of red, right? So, that's this business here. Um, I, I, I guess I need to, I just feel the need, right, to give you one more little piece of information, okay? How do I produce light? How is light produced? Well, lo and behold, Right? How do I produce light? Okay, it's gonna sound strange, but let's go, we gotta go back for a second, right? Suppose I take a proton, there's a proton. And if I genie this into existence, we all know that there's electromagnetic, uh, there's a field, right? So if I genie this guy on, right, at this point, what's gonna happen? Well, I'm gonna have this electromagnetic field zip away. Does that make sense? By the way, we're gonna have this electric field all over, right? But suppose I took this, now look, suppose I took this, and wiggle this back and forth. If I wiggle this back and forth, kind of like a rope or a string, what's gonna happen? What are you gonna get? You're gonna get yourself, right? Part of an electromagnetic wave, right? So I just wanted to let you know, 
all light, everything that we see, yes, you're looking at something now, how is it produced, right? By accelerating electric charges. So everything that we're talking about, right? So all light is produced by accelerating electric charges, right? Just thought it would be something that uh, you, sh you should know. Okay, so that's this lesson for today. I'll give you a couple of um, questions on Test Wizard and we move on. All right, guys, see ya.